Hello, Flat Earth researchers, debaters, and debunkers. We're going to have a look at some real science or physics, the Coriolis effect, uh, and see if this really does relate to things on or above the Earth. Uh, here we've got a couple of guys demonstrating what the Coriolis force actually is. First of all, they throw a ball perfectly normally, as we would do. You throw it, and because neither of them are moving, then they catch it. Now, these could be people on either side of the spinning globe Earth. And you can see here that by the time uh, the ball gets to the midway point, it, although it's going in a straight line, uh, is going to miss the person it was aimed at. So here the camera is fixed and we see this uh, rotating frame. So uh, when they throw the ball, you can see that uh, it just carries on in a straight line, but of course misses the guy it was aimed at. Okay, so the camera is fixed and we see the what could be the earth rotating beneath us. Now here we've got the camera as if it's rotating with the frame of reference. And now we see that the ball, although it's going in a straight line, appears to curve away. Okay, so it's going in a straight line from where it was thrown, but appears to curve because we are rotating with uh, the frame. Yeah. So this is why it's called a force. It's, but it's it's an illusion. It, it's. Uh, a bit like gravity really, an illusionary force. It's not actually real, it just appears to send things off on a curve. Yeah, so we've got this, this, although it's going off in a straight line, it appears to be going off on a curve because the guy is moving. Yeah, so uh, you can't, can't hit the other guy when he throws it directly at the other guy because he's moved out of the frame of reference. And of course, you can imagine that if they threw... OK, they got it right now because they're compensating for it. But you can imagine if, the guy, if one of the guys threw the ball up in the air, uh, the other guy could come around and catch it. Yeah? Uh, now, of course, people are going to argue that the atmosphere is stuck to the Earth, so you go around with it. All right, so that, that's a pretty good demonstration. Oh, is there a bit more? Yeah, uh, they're just kind of having some fun here now. So let's just move on to something else here a second. And have a look at what they teach us in school. So the Coriolis effect, the rotation of the Earth causes an interesting phenomenon on free moving objects on the Earth. Objects in the northern hemisphere are deflected to the right, while objects in the southern hemisphere are de deflected to the left. So it's showing you the path without the Coriolis effect, so it's, it's the green arrow. So basically, if you fired something this way, or it could be an aircraft or a rocket or whatever, and there was no spin to the Earth, then it would, it would basically go to the place you pointed at from the start. But uh, with given the Earth's spin... Uh, the red arrow denotes where you'd kind of end up if you just carried on going in a straight line while the Earth uh, rotated beneath you. This is said to be something that actually happens. Now, of course, they say that it causes the winds on either side of the equator to uh, rotate in different directions. Yeah, But uh, again, let's, if we just go back to this one again uh, and look at how, you know... What, what we're told is that uh, everything balances out at the equator and that you once you get to the equator, you're going the same speed as the 1,000 miles an hour at the equator. But, but really, that's, that's not physics, is it? That's just an excuse, yeah? You're going as soon as you... In fact, you, you wouldn't have to be going very fast at all to catch up with the guy coming the other way but you'd have to go extremely fast to maintain your position. 
Uh, they say it's all relative speeds, but actually, uh, you know, it, it, why does it all change the moment you get to the equator? Well, let's have a look at uh, an example of a flight here between uh, Bangkok and London Heathrow. This was this one was from from London Heathrow to Bangkok. Okay, so it's going from London to Bangkok. Uh, this is the kind of uh, f flight path they the, the, the pre-plan or the, the flight path it should take according to a globe. Uh, of course, you can. Uh, the, what they end up doing is always taking this kind of route, which which cuts it up there, and it's pretty much a straight line. Uh, you know, you can do your own thought experiments on the the fact that the Earth should be rotating this way, really towards the east, and it would be going very fast from Bangkok and 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 a lot slower in the UK. Uh, so which way should they go? Uh, re should they really be aiming to kind of cut across this way to reach England? Or But, you know, they've ended up just pretty much doing a straight line. Yeah? Okay. Took about 11 hours. Uh, so let's have a look at a flight going from Bangkok to New Zealand uh, in the south of the equator. And we have another 11-hour flight time and a very straight line all the way down to New Zealand. So again, considering the fact that things are supposed to be affected by the Coriolis force on the Earth, shouldn't be able to do a straight line and reach the destination we were aiming for. What should happen is we should see that the, the plane, the, the green line is the route that the plane ended up actually taking. So the plane should end up taking, um, well, you know, to be honest, they'd have to aim it off this way to end up down here if if the Earth was spinning at this rate, yeah? Again, these are the kinds of things you can look into yourself. Don't listen to me telling you how it is, yeah? But do your own research. Compare what we see here as the real physics, the real science, with what we're told happens and then doesn't happen with things above the Earth. I mean, again, it's got to emphasize that a ball is being thrown and it has a certain velocity just because from the guy throwing it, but an aircraft is powered flight. So it goes a lot faster and it can go against or with the spin. It's really, you know, and the thing is when you, you start hearing the excuses made, again, you know, why doesn't the Coriolis effect happen on the Earth? Especially, especially when you, you if you're taking off from the equator and you're going east or west, then there should be a huge difference in the times taken to reach different destinations as the as the earth spins beneath you but apparently it's at the equator where they make all the excuses and they say oh no 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 the 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 earth doesn't spin beneath you at the equator it only spins beneath you if you're coming from the north to the equator or from the south to the equator all of a sudden this this spin of a thousand miles an hour at the equator which affects everything else suddenly doesn't affect you if you're going east or west they say oh your speed is relative and, and this doesn't just doesn't add up to what we're shown here, where it, it either is or isn't an effect. You can't make excuses and have uh, you know half-hearted solutions and answers, especially when you see that uh, a flight like this is a direct straight line. So. This isn't like being on a spinning ball. It is like being on a stationary Earth. And so is this. You have this curved plan to kind of go along with the globe idea. But if you kind of s straighten this out as being on a flat Earth, then you've got a, a straight, direct line of flight. Yeah, that doesn't appear to be affected by any Coriolis force. Okay? So, again, this is... You know, flat earthers get uh, uh, told that they don't know science. The thing is, if you if you have a look at this this video here, you've got lots of people asking the question. Okay, 
and some people answer it yeah but you never get a fully straight answer okay so you've got people who who come here they 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 try to look at the science and then you can look at the science that's explained to us but then you have to reach your own logical conclusions about reality and the reality the reality is that nothing is done on this earth to compensate for any curvature or any alleged spin so yes we can all imagine and perceive that it that it's something that might have to happen on the earth but and and we know that this is real science but can it be applied to the reality of flying an aircraft above the earth which is supposed to be spinning beneath you yeah so th this is the kind of thing that's really up to the independent researcher and scientist you don't have to be in a, a white coat to be a scientist and to do this experiment and to to think beyond it and try to make comparisons yeah you don't need to be indoctrinated uh, in an education system to be told what is or what isn't. We can look at the science and we can make comparisons with what we're told and what the reality is. Yeah? So I, I encourage anyone to actually look, not just repeat the same old stuff we've been told, that's the difference between a fat earther and uh, someone who just comes along and says, oh, you're stupid, you don't know science. I'm afraid flat earthers do know science very well. Real physics. We've looked at it. And we've tried to make the comparisons with living on a globe and living on a flat earth. And the truth of the matter is, as I said, nothing like this ever happens on the earth in reality this doesn't happen and you can scale it up as much as you like on a small scale on a large scale from equator to the, the north or from the equator down south yeah okay so again science is in the hands of the individuals it's not exclusive to anyone who goes to an, uh, an institution and especially with things like YouTube and the internet we can we can do our own research and that's why the flat earther will say, do your own research. Don't come along and say, explain this, explain that. Do your own research. Work it out for yourself. And that's when you can become a flat earther. And that's when you'll be free of the global matrix and the imaginary gravity that is supposed to have us sticking to a spinning globe earth. It's nonsense. It's ridiculous. Real science proves that it's... Uh, a fact that we are on a stationary level Earth. Thank you very much.